You are tuned in to your weekly Sunday morning word broadcast, Rhema Power, with Reverend Ni Bernard Adiakwa, Senior Pastor of Powerhouse Ministries International, a program designed to improve your understanding into the Word of God, bring you practical solutions, and empower you to rise above life's daily challenges. Stay tuned. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Mana, a weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His face for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the Word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. Many people are frustrated because the grace of God upon their lives is in vain. And that is why I'm going to show you four enemies to avoid on your work of grace. Because if you don't manage your life, people will come into you and frustrate you forever. In your office, in your business, in your work, identify these four people and avoid them or clear them out of your life. Oh, David, it is true that you carry a grace to be a national hero. One day you will kill Goliath and save the nation of Israel. But if whilst you are a shepherd boy, all you sit down in the bush and do is staring at animals, Goliath will kill you as if God didn't kill you. So whilst you are David in the bush, God has destined for you to be a great person. But you, you don't learn any other thing. You are just there. And all you are doing is that you are complaining. I'm just a shepherd boy. And you are looking at the animals. And you are just staring. And you don't learn any other thing. You find out that greatness beckons. But you never get there. Never. When David was killing the bear. When David was killing the lion. You see, the opportunities for leadership was being molded in his life. We must be able to see the grace of God and the opportunities along our way. But you find out that in killing the bear and killing the lion. David was actually mastering details and accuracy and precision. So when the bear is coming, David knows that the bear is a fast animal. So if I give myself a certain distance and I begin to sling, by the time the bear attacks me, he was mastering details of speed, accuracy, precision. How was he able to face Goliath? Because he had dealt with things that were big and stronger than him physically. So by the time he faced Goliath, he had mastered what it took to kill a giant. When David was killing the bear, there was nobody there. So what is it that you have killed without public recognition? Because there are people who only want a public recognition. But a lot of things that God is going to do with you, I'll tell you something. It starts with you not even being noticed. If all my prayer life was public, I am a miserable pastor. If all my preparations were only because I had a preaching appointment, then I'm miserable. So in every good school, people who pass exams, you find out that they have homework away from the public eye. They learn outside the classroom. So if the only time you open a Bible, the only time you sing is for public. No, no. So you see the grace of God and how people make it in vain. And you see the grace of God and how people labor abundantly outside public recognition. And when the moment came, David stood before Goliath. And I'm sure he was telling himself, I'm not running away because I rehearsed well. Goliath was saying, am I a dog? Look at how Goliath was taunting him. Nobody had seen what David had been doing behind the scenes. But he said, Goliath, you don't know what I've been doing preparing for this day. Long before I got the opportunity to be singing publicly, I'd been rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing. Long before I was given the opportunity to preach, I'd been studying the scriptures, memorizing them, I mean, learning it, so that my public appearance will not be a setback. I've been diligently calculating distances and velocity. I've been following details and I've mastered the art of precision and accuracy. And I am what I am by the grace of God. And the grace of God that came upon me, I didn't waste it. In that I labored. I labored in prayer. I labored in diligence. I labored in practicing. And I mastered it. And what I have as a sling is faster and will knock a bear out. You see, arbitrary living your life and hoping 
that one day things will work out and you become exceptional. It's a joke. It's a joke. Every place you find yourself is an opportunity. The eyes of the Lord are upon you. Everywhere you find yourself is an opportunity to begin to explore. Learn to become exceptional by training yourself. Therefore, you must find the grace this year to labor in your area of calling and speciality. Endure the training. Endure the hardships as a good soldier of Christ. And some of it, while you are going through it, it is painful and you suffer. But you still believe in the grace of God is taking you for the future. You believe God has called you to be a businessman. Go in the grace. Look for courses to attend. Start sitting under somebody who has started a successful business. And let the person mentor you and retrain you and add other skills so that you can grow. And in that time, that is what I'm going to share with you, the four people you must avoid. Because some people will come your way when you are being processed. And if you can't identify them, they will frustrate the grace of God in you. You see, there's a difference between failure as a person and then failure as an event. The fact that I didn't do too well preaching today doesn't mean I can't preach at all. So you've got to learn to identify failure as an event and failure as a person. You must never fail as a person. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Pray more. Trust God to open more doors and opportunities. Your whole life is a sum of the people you allow to access you. And you must be careful. When God wants to bless you and save you, he sends a man. When the devil wants to destroy you, he also sent a man. So your ability to discern and identify who is around you is key to making the grace of God work for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 33. What does it say? Be not deceived. Evil communications will corrupt good manners. Can I rephrase it? Evil communications will destroy the grace of God upon your life. So don't be deceived. The people you work with, the people you allow around you, the people who assess you can totally frustrate and destroy what God wants to do in your life. So you're a good student in school and then people who take drugs and people who are running away from school come into your life. See, there's grace, but it can totally destroy you. You got a job and the wrong person started poisoning you. you when you went into the office and into the company, the people who are lazy started influencing you and they started talking to you and they started giving you bad advice. So God is about to do something great, but the wrong people have accessed you and you allow them. Somebody gave you a job and gave you an opportunity and gave you a car to start life as a driver. Somebody gave you an opportunity and gave you some money to start business. And then the wrong advice, evil communication. You wanted to work hard and then somebody poisoned you. You were doing so well in ministry. You were obedient. You were serviceable. You joined a department. You were giving your all. Then somebody poisoned you. God was going to take you far and through you save multitudes like Joseph. Because of your obedience, the whole of the Israelites are going to get food to eat. But somebody poisoned you. Evil communication corrupts good manners. And for many people, if you start looking at your people around you, you'll begin to know who you are and where your future is. Can I say it again? If you start looking around you, it will tell you who you are and how far you go. That is why we must be very careful who you bring into your life. You see, Jesus had different categories of people around him. There were the multitudes. There was the crowd that followed him. But he never committed himself to them. Then there was the 120. Then there were the 70. Out of the 70, there were the 12. And even out of the 12, there were the 3. Not everybody must have access to you. In the tabernacle, there was the outer court. Were they not human beings? But there was only one person who could enter the Holy of Holies. So not everybody around you must have the same level of access. The sum of your relationships can be found in John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but to steal to kill and to destroy. Hmm. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So you find out that both the thief and Jesus are coming. You see, one of the things is that both of them want to access your life. So both of them, especially the wolf, huh, who is the thief, will wear sheep's clothing so that you don't identify him. So somebody wants to get close to you not because he wants to do you good and pretend to be around you and pretend to like you, but so there are two people around you, but one is a thief, one is Jesus. One is a wolf, one is a good person. Your ability to discern, and as a pastor, I've been wounded. <laughs> oh yeah. So some of these things, you learn them by maybe experience. Because they are all going to get close, but their mindset is not the same. And sometimes they may even pretend to give you advice, but the advice has sinister motives. For many people who think that, oh, going to church is just a ritual. Mm, that's why you are spiritual. You don't just go to church. That's why we pray. That's why we discern. That's why we yield and submit to the Holy Ghost. Because there's a thief who is not a good person. And then there's Jesus Christ. They don't come like that, but they come through people. 
I told you, when God wants to bless you, he sends somebody. When the devil wants to destroy you, he also sends somebody. You are on the throne. Rehoboam. You are doing well. You've inherited your father's throne. Then the people around you give you bad advice and you lose your throne. You've got to be careful. The grace of God must not be in vain. So both the thief and Jesus get close, but the agenda is totally different. One person gets close and comes to take away from your life. The other person gets close and gives into your life. So when the thief comes, he comes to steal, he comes to kill, he comes to destroy. But when Jesus comes, he comes to give you life and give you more abundantly. And I'm going to show you the difference. When one person gets close, for example, and then makes you lazy, makes you reckless, you start becoming disrespectful. Hey, hey. The person may make you laugh. The person may eat with you. But you become lazier. You become reckless. You've moved away from God. You started having bad habits. One of the things about the devil is that he makes bad habits pleasurable. Have you noticed? So if you want to take cocaine, it's like, it's like you're high. It's like it's, it's a good thing. So you, you are enjoying the bad thing you are doing, but it would eventually destroy you. Now you stop praying. Now you stop studying the word. Now you stop coming to church. Initially, it's like, oh, it's Italy. now you are free. You are watching TV. <laughs> you see, it's pleasurable. But that's how he tempted Eve and Adam. He gave them something to eat. They looked at it. It was nice, but it killed them. So you are a student in school. You are studying. You are obeying rules. And then somebody comes and says, oh, after all, ah, you are too, ah, well, Charlie, let's break the rules. Let's not go for classes. Let's not do the homework. Go see. You see, they are taking away from you. But at that time, then you are accepted by them, but they are destroying your future. That's the thief. And God opened our eyes to begin to discern so that you will not be frustrated. There are many people who started so well, yet you lost it. You are the vibrant usher. You are the strong prayer warrior. Sell meetings. Pain of tithe. And then somebody started whispering to you. Even paying tithe now is a major problem. You see? You are enjoying it because, yeah, you have money. But you don't realize it's going to kill you. Thief cometh not. But to steal, to kill, and to destroy Ask yourself when you stop doing some good things and look at the people who came into your life at that time. When Jesus comes close to you, he makes you hard work. You see, it means that he pushes you into a life of hard work. You become respectful. You are prepared to sacrifice more. So now you have a friend who says, let's go and learn. Oh, let's go to the dining hall. Let's avoid doing these things. Everybody's doing it. Say, no, let's not do it. Because there's somebody who is at He may look like he, he's stopping your fun, but he's saving you. That's God talking to you. I don't know how many of you have seen Jesus physically but that's how he works he's working through people he's pushing you Charlie do the work oh have you finished your homework Charlie make sure you go for classes that's Jesus and he's pushing you into a life of sacrifice suffering for a while but the God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while make you perfect and now today's message Every company, every church, every nation, every organization, their future depends on its ability to discern who are godly and who are not and who are of the devil. Every individual, your future is dependent upon your elimination of these people who come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And they come in sheep's clothing. What do people around you bring into your life? And as I grow older, I ask myself more critical questions. And I look critically at the quality of relationships around me. I'm not looking for people who just chat with me, but people who are strategic into my life. If you have a company and you're employing people, talent and skill are never enough. Because apart from talent and skill, there must be character. So you may have somebody who works very well, but he's a thief. So you may have somebody who has the qualifications, educated, but he's a bad person, he's a thief. And when I say a thief, I'm talking about the character of the devil. Hmm. He will steal, he will kill, he will destroy. He doesn't add into your life. But he's a very good friend you can chat with, you can laugh with, you enjoy, but he's taking you away from God. You need to ensure that the person you are close with is not unfaithful, but is faithful. Even though they are human weaknesses, you see, you don't trivialize and justify them. So, all of us will have human weaknesses. You may sleep, you may fall, but you don't make that a lifestyle that this is me. Every country's soul lies in its people. The culture of a people is the culture of the nation. And the culture of the people is the attitude of the people that can either develop or break a nation. So as a church, those of us here form the culture of the church. And the future of our church depends on the attitudes of the people in the church. If you take China, for example, China's strength has been its people and its rich culture. The Chinese attitude has brought prosperity to the Chinese people and lifted them up. 
The Chinese people are respected because they have a culture of hard work. They work extremely hard for long hours. Their productivity is extremely high. They value their working a lot and they devote themselves to work. And no wonder everywhere they go in the world, the Chinese people take over. The Chinese people are open to learning new things. So he comes to Ghana, he doesn't eat kinky, but he'll go back to his country and produce kinky and fabricate a kinky machine and produce kinky because he's open to learn new things, even though he doesn't like them. The Chinese people never give up. They are resilient. When they want to pursue something, they will do everything. So they'll come from China, don't mind going to live in the rural areas. They don't want to stay in Accra. They will go to places where Africans don't want to go and go and dig up their gold and build their mansions and stay there in peace. They, they don't give up and they'll fight back because they want to hold on something. When the Chinese are working, they work for the bigger picture and not just for themselves. They are excellent team players. So when you find one Chinese person who has entered into a place, he wants his other Chinese people to come and join him. Then you go to another continent. He wants to live alone. He doesn't want anybody to know that he's around. How many people have you made Christians since you got born again? So the Chinese example is a testimony of a faithful attitude coupled with a sheer grit to circumvent problems and a commitment to a never die spirit that results in profitable achievements. And since 1978, in just a little over four decades, the Chinese have propelled themselves to become a world economic force. And this reverberates in their security and military prowess and their stability as a nation. Today, they've taken over. So if we are also willing to, you know, make sure that we do the same things, to work hard, never give up, persevere, accept challenging assignments, you find out that the same results will start having them. So there are two types of people who will come into your life. The thieves and then the life givers. Everybody will rise with the quality of relationships around you. People who give into your life and add to your life. Not people who subtract from you. So there are four people. Number one is the passive friend, the passive employer. When I say passive, it means somebody who is around but he has an indifferent attitude to you. He looks on and concerned. He doesn't support you. He's around. He doesn't talk to you, but he's around. He's around you. He does nothing to your life. He's passive. It's just like employing somebody who is passive into a job. He looks on and concerned when things are going on around him. He's not interested in the overall progress of the company. He doesn't care and cannot be bothered. So he comes to church. He's not bothered whether people come to church or they don't come. Today I've come to church, but I don't care. He doesn't care whether things are working or they're not working. He's just passive. Or ninimu. You see, if you are somebody who is just around yeninimu, when somebody has a funeral, he doesn't care. When somebody has a wedding, he doesn't care. When the preaching is good, he doesn't care. He never encourages or says anything to anybody about the progress of the... He doesn't discuss the church with anybody. He's just there. He's in a department. He's just there. No addition, no subtraction. You are employed. You are not an addition. You are not a subtraction. You are just there. And there are many people, unfortunately, who are just there. But you see, your life must be a blessing and an addition. Don't just be there. The second worker or the second person is what I call the parasite. So the first is passive. The second is parasitic. The parasite friend or worker comes with a self-seeking attitude. Like a parasite, he's just coming to feed on you. So once you have something he wants, then he wants to be around you. The only reason why he's around is that Jesus will multiply bread and give him food. He's not around to follow Jesus Christ. He's not around because he believes in Jesus Christ. He's around because Jesus will give him bread. Jesus will give him something. Jesus will answer his prayers. So he comes into the company or the organization or into a relationship because he can get something from you. And immediately he can get something. So that person is more interested in himself than he's interested in the church or in the company. And even though he may be a skilled worker, every day he's looking for what he can get out. And if I can, what, what will I get from doing this? What will I get from doing that? Eh? What is the church giving me? What will I get if I go for the wedding? What will I get if I work? If I do an extra... So because of that, he's parasitic, his whole mind. Because he puts his interest first. But look at it. God said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. So when you are dealing with God, you put the larger interest first. And in the larger interest being met, your own needs will be met. Listen carefully. If the company makes profit, they will keep you. So when you join a company or an organization, the right attitude is to put the bigger picture first. But if you put your own interest first, and the company makes losses, you will go. And I'll tell you something. If David or Joseph had been parasitic and had just gone to work in Potiphar's house, or David had just gone and is parasitic, it's what I get. He will never have killed the bear. He will never have killed the lion. If David was passive and just looking on, the bear will have killed the sheep. He will have frustrated the grace of God. You, what do you do in church? Oh, as for me, I do nothing. I just go to church and I sit at the back. 
That's all I do. They don't even know me. Passive, parasitic. You see, you think nobody knows you, but you are frustrating God's grace over your life. Because God didn't create anybody to be passive or parasitic. God never created another person just to depend on another human being. So what type of person are you? Because it will show the grace of God and where it will take you. So if you have friends who are all passive, all your friends come when it's convenient. All your friends, you see, there's no suffering a while. There's no sacrifice. There's no prayer. It's not convenient. It's passive. You only come to pray when it's about you. You only come to a church service when it's about you. When you have nothing to do, you won't come. You see, parasitic. Who likes parasites? When a mosquito is biting you, what's your first inclination? Kill it. You see why some people don't survive? Because if you are parasitic and that's your nature, after a while, something or somebody will kill you. So it is important for you to understand if you spend a lot of time putting your interest first, if you spend a lot of time thinking about your claims after church, I'm going to claim my transport. When I go to work, I'm going to claim this. I'm going to claim that. I'm going to... That's all that is in your mind rather than the fact that you are there to work. The third worker you must avoid is what I call the prodigal worker or friend. The prodigal person spends a lot of time finding fault and blaming. See, the prodigal son, he looked at his father. He had a good father. He found fault with the father. So you come to church, all you find is faults. The prodigal son or the prodigal worker or the prodigal friend is around you, but he's always finding fault with you. And he wastes things around him. So the prodigal son is giving a lot, but he wastes everything. He spends a lot of resources, little results. His cost will far exceed his benefits or input into the company. With a prodigal worker or the prodigal friend, things are always breaking down around him, and he doesn't care. So there's a lot of waste. So have you found, for example, somebody who works in a company, he's leaving the company, the lights are on, he doesn't care. He doesn't realize that the electricity that has been left on overnight will take more of the companies and it will reduce the money for income. And in Ghana, for example, there are a lot of wastages that go on. The tap is leaking, don't come and repair. The lights are on during the daytime, nobody will care. So when you are working out of this place and something is on, something has been left where it shouldn't be, forgive me, there are a lot of taxi drivers who spend more money on repairs than the income they give to their master. I mean, which taxi owner wants to give a taxi to somebody every week repairs? Every week, no coffee take. Every week, something's poor. You see, and when you have people like that, eliminate them. Because the grace of God has given you money to take to school. But something is chopping the money away. Wastages. 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 People around you who waste things. Leakages from your life. God blesses you, there's a leakage. God gives you something, there's a leakage. Everything God gives you is spoiled, it's destroyed. You can't find it again. Prodigal. Somebody was telling me the story of a young man who was working for another person, and the person traveled. And he gave him the house and says, you are a caretaker, look after the house. The guy traveled for two years. When he came back, the person had cleaned the house, made sure everything, the water, etc., et cetera, was being paid, etc. Then he said, listen, I wanted to have somebody come and stay in the house and look after the house. But now I'm traveling abroad. Stay in the house for as long as you like. But you, somebody leaves his house for you. By the time he comes back, cobwebs all over the house. The house is dirty. The grass is overgrown. And you are leaving the house and say, it's not my house. Prodigal. So you see the grace of God. All of God available to you. So you, you don't stay around and let things, and the people around, hey, after it's not your house. Why, why are you painting it? Is it your house? Why are you weeding? Why you are just employed to come and do this? Don't worry your head. See? Frustrating them. You must identify the passive people around you. You must identify the prodigal people around you. You must identify the parasites around you. And finally, the proud. You see, the proud person hmm, is an asset, but he's arrogant. He may be a very good worker, but he cannot be retrained. He cannot be corrected. And usually, because he's a good worker, he has the skills, it makes him arrogant and boastful and self-opinionated because he actually believes that he's superior. You see, the grace of God is being frustrated because you can't be taught, you can't be corrected. Sometimes, when people preach or when people lead a prayer meeting, I have to call them up and say, do it this way or don't say this when you're saying it or don't do that. Some people are very grateful because it improves their public ministry. But some people who, especially people who are specialists and they can do things that takes a lot more effort to learn. Hey, immediately, immediately, arrogance, pride, undermining, gossiping about your boss. And proud people want personal recognition. They don't work in a team because he, he has the expertise. He doesn't want to teach anybody. He fights people. He criticizes people because he may be a good worker, but the attitude frustrates the grace of God. And God says that the humble he will exalt, but the proud will he put down. So you find out that you are in the presence of God, but you're not growing because you are proud and you are stuck. 
Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14 gives a very exciting verse. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. The backslider. So backsliding is not just an action, but you cannot be corrected. In your heart, you have already backslided. Nobody can advise you and tell you, come to church. Nobody can speak to you and say, pay your tithe. Nobody can speak to you and say, the way you do it, improve it. And sometimes it's an attitude. Something that should take you one minute. Because you are proud, it will take you one hour. The grace of God. You see, when you start serving, you lose your identity. And then you empty yourself so that God's grace can come into your life. If in your life, you have these people, they will destroy and frustrate grace. They will make it difficult. God wants to take you far. Can you imagine if Joseph had met people like this who were passive and had followed them? He would have remained one of them. Can you imagine if he had become a parasite in the house? Eh, no need to want. Okay. This is what I want. That's all I want. Can you imagine if Joseph had met people who were prodigal, wasteful? Will Potiphar have handed over everything to him? Can you imagine if you had met Joseph who was proud? Do you think God would have elevated him and given him the second highest position in the land? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of the Lord and he will lift you up. He will lift you up. May the grace of God lift us up. You see, may we attract grace to excel and to be promoted. I know you are becoming a big man in your office, but in the presence of God, be humble. Be humble. There are people because of the position you occupy now, nobody can talk to you and say, join a department. Or nobody can talk to you and say, do this or do that. Why? You see, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Because of a position now, you become very argumentative. Humble yourself. Mm. Because you sing better and you dance better and you even preach better than me. Humble yourself. Because the grace of God comes upon people who are humble. And when any country has these four types of people, more than the country will become poor. Because there are people who are passive in Ghana. There are people who are parasitic in this country. There are people who are prodigal and wasteful. And there are people who are proud. They have their qualifications. They are educated. But some of are educated thieves. The thief has come to steal. Stealing our resources. But God give us people who when they come into the country, you see, will give life. Anything that will succeed will be determined by the quality of people there. If the people are these four people, if you employ somebody and the person has these qualifications, your business will collapse. And many businesses are collapsing in this country because the wrong type of people, they have the certificates, they went to school, but they have bad attitudes. May we cast out these spirits. In whatever you do, let the grace of God, the God of all grace will work in an environment where the attitudes are that we will labor more abundantly than they all. My prayer for you is Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11. Verse 11 and 12. And we desire that every one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope and to the end. That you will not be lazy, but you will follow them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Every one of you will labor more abundantly. Thank you, Father. And so this morning, I'm asking for grace. Let me find the grace to help me in my business. I know you are working somewhere. I know you are doing something. But the grace of God shall not be in vain. I know you are starting a business, but note these people. If you put them in your company and you let them be, they will destroy you. If you let this company in your life, they will frustrate the grace of God. And so, Father, help us. Father, help us. The mainstay of a people is in the grace of God and the people you allow around you. May the grace of God abound toward us so that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, you are bound unto every good work. Father, we thank you. Pour out your great grace upon us. Pour out all grace upon us. Our heart cry, our prayer is that your grace will abound toward us. We give you thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Mana our weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His faith for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. 
you surely will be blessed by the word of God in Jesus' name. God richly bless you. Thank you for listening to Rhema Power with Reverend Nee Bernard Adiakwa. We hope you've been blessed. For further information, contact 0303-931-841. Tune in next week for another insightful teaching on Rhema Power.